The Gilded Age is produced by Universal Television and brought to you by HBO of Warner Media. All characters, plot points, and footage are property of HBO. The Gilded Age is a brand new drama airing exclusively on HBO Max. Join your friends at Free Tours by Foot as we take you through New York City, showing you actual locations from the show, locations in New York City the show is based around, discuss plot points, and go over the actual history of all of the events of the Gilded Age. And remember to book your tour with freetoursbyfoot.com the next time you visit New York City or any one of our other locations. And now, on to Catherine. Hi everyone, welcome back. We're back talking more Gilded Age. Episode four came out this week. Um, we're gonna change up the format a little bit this week because as we get further into this show and it just keeps getting bigger and more layered, one of my favorite things is getting to talk to someone else that is watching the show. Um, so today I am joined by another New York City tour guide, Lady Altavis, so that way we can dive into some of the history and some of the context behind this story that is getting crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess first things first you've watched episode four I know more than once um what's jumping out at you as they're starting to unfold with this story what jumps out is the dynamic between each family member Peggy and her father the husband and the wife the mother and the daughter it is like looking at a connect the dots without 75% of the lines being connected. <laughs> it's just like, yes. dot, 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 dot. and I think what's crazy. And I know we've talked about is they are so attentive to just really minute details. And they do have a wonderful history professor that is a consultant on the show. And obviously this is all being tended to, but the way they do it is so subtle. And so yeah. a lot of it's trying to also solve the puzzle of knowing what some of the rules were. People lived by so many rules. Strict rules. Very strict. No leeway, no gray area. I mean, because Mr. Russell is sitting there waiting outside of this building for this guy to walk by on the sidewalk because he's not allowed to go into the building he's going into. He's and he, not wouldn't, a member. he wouldn't even try. He's um, not a member. He's not a member. I assume it's meant to be the Knickerbocker Club, which is a real club. Right. And the reason I assume that is he makes this statement like, oh, their membership standards haven't dropped because that low yet. Yeah. That low because the <laughs> Knickerbocker Club was formed because the Union Club, which already existed, had started letting in people like the Russells, you know, new money okay. family. And so I missed people, that. Yes, yeah, some members were like, well, this isn't strict enough. We're having to mingle with all these people. We're going to go make our own club. So I assume that's the club that there's, I mean, they never say it. Right, but, right, right. But based but actually, on that clue. That little clue. And I know that Mr. Russell's son has mentioned dining at the Union Club. So presumably they're accepted there. But okay. they wouldn't be at the Knickerbocker. So it's like, oh yeah, all these tiny little things um, that you just really, and that's why, I mean, that's why we're doing this is just to give a little more context to what's going on here um, because there were all of these weird rules at the time. Right. Um, and so, there are rules for women, there are rules for men, there are rules for blacks, there are rules yes. for white, there are rules for rich, there are rules for poor. <laughs> You had to know all of them. Yes, and abide. Mm -hmm. And abide. And you were meant to know. And it's funny seeing somebody, and I think it's interesting the way they're using this character of Marion basically to be us as the audience because she doesn't know the rules. Right, outsider. Outsider. And so mm -hmm. we're watching her figure out the rules and that's, I think, the way the audience is meant to figure them out. So one of the... The th first times that I was like, oh, Marion does not know the way things work. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about that Bloomingdale's scene. Oh, <sighs> instantly. I'm watching like, don't go in there. Don't do it. <laughs> don't go. Why did Peggy go? So I, I wouldn't have was, So at the time, so Bloomingdale's department store, still Bloomingdale's today, yeah. but, um, but this would have been 
their early, one of their earlier stores. It would have been a few blocks away from the current one. So I just want to check my own history. It wasn't necessarily that by the strict rules, Peggy's not allowed to be in Bloomingdale's, but it's by trouble. social construct, no. It's trouble. It's it's trouble. Nothing good is going to come out of this. Nothing. Nothing. Um, because if you accidentally touch something, now you have to buy it and you've given them a reason to knock you over the head or something. Just don't go. Just don't go. And I love the nonverbal communication with Peggy's eyes. Oh, she worked that scene. Baby, yes, when that lady was talking to her and she was showing her that box, the way Peggy rolled her eyes, number one, I felt was to let the white people gawking at her know, I don't want to be here no way. Right. And number two, I don't want to be associated with that lady either. Even though she's white and I'm black, so I'm a second class citizen, I know who she is and I do not approve. And she's and trouble. If she could have grabbed Marion by her coattail and yanked her out of that store, I think she would have. I think so too. And it was, it was one of those moments where I'm like, Oh, Marion doesn't know the rules. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. She doesn't know the rules because she just is like, I want to go into Bloomingdale. Let's walk out together. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> and um, and it was interesting. And I think where they kind of again they kind of show this layering. Mm hmm. I you can tell Peggy knows no, this is a bad idea. You can tell no, I don't want to be there. But they also almost show you in the way the interaction works it's not that there's a sign pasted on the door saying you can't be in there because they don't go up to her and ask her to leave right they just make it uncomfortable they know she knows better right and they just stare and there's just that you're right it's this non-verbal standoff between them and it's I, I think it was just such an interesting way of just kind of showing all of these different layers yeah. in one scene, in one short scene. And I'm just sitting there like, don't do it, just go. Don't do it, don't do <laughs> it. I, I actually was surprised that it didn't go left, but the scene abruptly ended when she said, let's get out of here. <laughs> if you notice she used her mama talking to a child voice, let's get out of here. <laughs> right, because clearly, I mean, she's figured out at this point, Marion doesn't get it. She's in here. She doesn't know this is a bad idea. She's talking to this woman, which is also a bad idea. And going Everything on and about, on and on. Everything about this is wrong. Because um, once it hits the fan, baby, guess who's going to get the brunt of the abuse? Absolutely. Marion, you're going to go home and live your happy little lily white life. I, on the other hand, oh my God. And it was interesting. And they didn't, haven't gone into this at all, but um, just for some context, it would have actually been a relatively new thing at the time that these two young women would even be out in a shopping district without a male chaperone. There was an area of New York called the Ladies Mile. Yes. And it was a big deal because that's where all these department stores were and women could actually shop there without a male chaperone. And I know that sounds wild, <laughs> but that was a very real thing. And you'll notice every time Marion is out and about as a young woman of high social standing, she is never by herself. Can't you know, be. She, she can't There's be. another rule. That's There's another rule. rule. You can't be out by yourself. <laughs> um, and so every single lady. time you see her, she's with someone. Um, right. And that's her chaperone. <sighs> I think I wouldn't have done well, to be honest. <laughs> um, right. Well, like, unless you have a chaperone like that's understanding right. and will allow you to do what you want to do on the low low. That's right. our that's our relationship. But if it's an older person right. that is obligated to your parents, then that might be a problem. Well, and you see it with Gladys Russell. Her governess mm -hmm. is getting fired because she let her go meet up with a friend. At in broad hotel. daylight? Yeah, in broad daylight. I mean, he was a boy. <laughs> and she lost her job. Right, right. <laughs> it was in a public setting. I mean, like nothing, nothing could have happened, but that was that. And you let me ask you this. Did you she's very upright, 
and professional when she went down to the kitchen and she said, wash it, feed it, and let me know. Did you notice the half smirk? How she was pleased with her new position? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> I was like, oh, she's happy. She said, mm-hmm. <laughs> because even the servants, there's right. this hierarchy and there's these rules. And, oh, you know what I loved? When the butler comes over and they, they're walking through the house, he's like, oh, you put that fork there? Interesting. Oh. <laughs> Yo, he was hating. He was. He was. Bad hating. It was the shadiest <laughs> thing. I mean, the very polite British butler shady, but. Um, colored glass. Colored glass. Oh, chicken soup. Oh. Oh, it and must they, be chilled. <laughs> because there was there was this right way to do things absolutely and there was a wrong way to do things and and so it was so interesting so you can see even between the servants which you uh -huh. think servants they're the servants no they're not there's still this hierarchy and that's where I think you start to see that as well when Peggy starts to live at the Van Rhines all of a sudden there's this ruffle because Peggy as Mrs. Van Ryn's secretary is now automatically the highest position of the women in the house. And she's black. And she's black and she's gonna what? live on the same floor. Oh my God. What? <laughs> and, yes. and there's this uproar. But and then, how Peggy has to put up with it. Yeah. The Inquisition. Yeah. Where where'd you go? What were you doing? Well, why did you do I don't have the answer to you? You're not my boss. I think one of the weirdest ones was like she the one of the other women is like taking back she's like oh do you like coffee I'm like why wouldn't she like coffee what is that right 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 <laughs> but I, I, I mean they are doing a wonderful job they are doing a wonderful job because I would not doubt if that lady didn't think she had a tail up under her dress mm -hmm. absolutely and all kind tell. of gross stereotypes and just horrible, horrible story she's heard about black people and in the jungle and they're savages and they're cannibals. I bet you she believes 100% of the stuff she's heard about black people <laughs> in and order so to make herself feel elevated. Absolutely, because that mm -hmm. was really what it was all about was, well, I need to feel like I'm better than someone. And that's what you're seeing in all of these social structures. I mean, no that's matter right. which group of people you're talking about is someone needs to feel like they are better than someone. In order for me to go through my day-to-day -day life and endeavors, I yep. have to be elevated over somebody. Right. And at that's all where a lot of this structure and a lot of these rules would have come from. But what's interesting, so my favorite part of episode four is that we're finally starting to get, not all, but some of the information about Peggy, because so far there really hasn't been that much. Right. And now all of a sudden we start to see something and we're starting to go to her house. And so let's jump in a little bit to this world that Peggy comes from, because clearly there have been all of these assumptions about who this mm -hmm. character is and, and where she comes from. And then we roll up to her house and I'm going to be honest, it doesn't look a lot different than the Van Ryan's house. Falling! <laughs> um, so, um, so I wanted to give our viewers some context because I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong, this is not a slice of Black history that we see that much in TV shows, in films. Absolutely. Me even studying Africana studies, I didn't learn about this group of people until college, like right. senior, junior year of college. And I here I am Black, but I knew of certain instances, like in my family, we had what was called Black royalty, mm -hmm. but I didn't know about the whole New York society of educated, never ever enslaved, generational wealth owning blacks. It is just, you know, I think people tend to think 19th century people automatically go to civil war, they go to reconstruction. And slavery. And slavery. Oh, like, and yeah, and then yeah. we just miss this piece 
of history, but this was real. This absolutely existed. This is not made up for the Gilded Age. Um, they know nothing is, about cotton picking. They know nothing about being a slave. They know nothing about being whipped. They probably have read about it or probably have relatives or mm -hmm. grandparents. So they know it exists, but it's so far removed. It's almost like a detachment. And I find that personally as an African-American coming from the South to the North, there is a like a disconnect mm -hmm. and it wasn't and i was i don't know what i was reading but it wasn't until like emmett till happened that blacks up north was like wait a minute now he was a 14 year old kid and then when they saw the fire hoses they're like that could be me if i was so it took i don't it took like extreme measures for the african americans in philadelphia in boston in new york to feel connected to that because that's bad, that's horrible for those people. But in New York, this society, in particular in Brooklyn and Weeksville, they've been reading for like two or three generations. Like this is nothing new. Handling their own money, opening businesses, and having nice things in the house, pianos, chandeliers, fresh, fresh flowers. They had fresh flowers, just like the white people. Yep. And I did notice as many glasses on the table at dinner time, but they had three and it was crystal mm -hmm. water for mm -hmm. crystal. They didn't have um, five, but they had three. <laughs> but they had three. And again, like as you walk through that first floor, I mean, you can see it. And again, you're seeing it when Marion pulls up to this house, she's like, wait a minute. She, you see her I look at the address again. I loved her neighbor's reaction. <laughs> he was so over her. <laughs> he looked back twice like, girl, are you lost? <laughs> you finna come around here and start again. Just like I said with Peggy going into Bloomingdale's, nothing good is going to come out of this white lady walking around this neighborhood with all of these Black people. She's either here to start some trouble or she's going to bring trouble. And you can see Marion's just complete ignorance of this entire community. I mean, clearly she has no idea. And of what she's walking into, I mean, this <laughs> you can tell she's taken it back when all of a sudden this servant answers the door and is like, well, are you expected? Do you have a card? I mean, just like they would at her home at the Van Rines. For the first time, I bet you that's her first time going through that. Being I'm scrutinized sure for the was. color of her skin. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you can see she was just in no way prepared for this because you're right she wouldn't go to a home on the upper east side without a card or without uh -huh. being expected or without Unannounced. being invited and Absolutely. she assumes this is fine she's like well i'm going to bestow charity i got my bag of old shoes oh god um and then the maid's like well do you have a card and just, i mean she fumbles for she finds and that, one and another rule we have to have dinner at a respectable hour and yes. you got the nerve to show up during dinner time do mm -hmm. you think we not eat <laughs> and you can see i mean the maid is like very taken back. she's like well they're eating like <laughs> um, and she comes in she's got her little silver tray with marion's card shows it to the lady of the house okay now we're gonna get up and, and we're gonna see what is this lady thinking but check this out don't sleep on that we have to stop our meal get up and address her because she's a white lady in our house. Nobody can just say, oh, well, send her away. Well, we just can't leave her standing out there. But can you imagine if Peggy went to a white house, they're not getting up, stopping their meal. She no. won't even get allowed. Even Absolutely get not. And so even though you have this clearly very wealthy family and they are very much a part of this black elite in Brooklyn, they're still yeah. by the terms of broad society, Lesser than. Lesser than. And you can see and you're I right in that exact moment. Um, and because if I offend you in my house, trouble will come my way. Right. And um, so I want to talk about Peggy's parents for a minute, not yeah. just because the divine Audrey McDonald is playing her mother and I'm just waiting for them to decide to make a musical episode because they should. Ooh. Love oh my god um, oh. and um but she does nothing wrong by the no, way no she's perfect uh, <laughs> she has more tony awards than anybody ever i um, saw a water the other day i saw it 
I'm sure. Um, so, <laughs> but it's so interesting because I, and I know they haven't dropped a lot, but I'm just curious what your speculation is on, on some of the backstory of these two people, how they ended up in Brooklyn. Um, right. And, you know, one of the things I want to point out, because I think timeline wise, this will startle people. This show takes place in 1882. This is less than 20 years after the Civil War ends. Right. Here we are. So how did we get here? Okay, so I'm going to go out on a limb. And you know how Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman, we know they came through New York quite often. So I would imagine that's the same way he did. Um, Mm -hmm. Came after maybe... Well, he has a business and it seems to be doing pretty well. So maybe he started the business before the Civil War. I'm going to give him that. So they've been in New York about 30 years. Mm -hmm. And I think they met in New York. I think Audra's that that group that knows nothing about cotton picking. She knows nothing about illiteracy and whipping. And she's... Um, She's well-read and probably well-traveled, but I would imagine she's born and raised in New York. I got that impression too. I mean, and again, they've been so subtle in this, but they very casually drop in in this family dinner that he was born an enslaved man. I don't get that impression about her though. No. I'm sensing that they they are coming from some pretty different places. So I agree with you. I think they must have met in New York. I think she comes from money. I think she had yeah. a silver spoon in her mouth. Yeah. I think she's always had um, help. Mm-hmm. Dressmakers. Mm-hmm. I think she probably plays two or three instruments and reads music. Mm-hmm. She probably speaks a different language. She probably the has these accomplishments. Language. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, this and is... how they met, I don't know. <laughs> I know. I hope that's so the point they, they tell us. I don't know. Uh, what's up? Um, yeah, it, it's, I know I do. I hope that they, I was just laughing. I hope that they, they give us something Break it down. <laughs> because yeah, 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 yeah. Because there's so much there is so much room for expansion. Absolutely. Um, and they're just driving so me crazy. Knows, with it too. This era of history, like we've said, is so completely layered. Um, we're actually going to do an entire separate video on oh, we must. We the emergence must. of the black elite in New York, kind of timeline how exactly this formed happened, because this spread too. I mean, honestly, they haven't specified a neighborhood in Brooklyn yet. I'm assuming Weeksville could be Fort Greene. Or Crown Heights, could, somewhere like that. Crown Heights, could, mm-hmm. be, could be some other spots, but... I think it always might have been Williamsburg, too. Yes, I know there was a part of Williamsburg as well, and mm-hmm. we're obviously talking about Brooklyn, but just so everyone knows, we could just as easily be talking about parts of Harlem. We could just... There are... Yeah. This was a broader area and a broader community than just this one little pocket they're showing. So we're going to do a whole separate video on that because there's there's a lot there. Um, So yes, I, I, my assumption was weak spill, but you're right. That could have, we could have been talking about so many different parts of Brooklyn even. Um, And uh, as far as I know, history wise, a lot of families, made the move out to Brooklyn following the draft riots. Right. Oh, absolutely. For safety. Because they needed a place, they needed a safe haven. Right. Because you would be killed on site for being black, period. No questions asked. Right. And people were. I I mean, Mm -hmm. um, and and certainly when we talk, when we do our separate video, we'll go into a little bit more detail about what exactly the draft riots were. Okay. Um, This was going on during the Civil War. The long and short of it is all of a sudden there was mandatory conscription, but you could buy your way out of it if you were wealthy enough. And Uh that led to this just kind of massive upheaval. And this all went down in Manhattan. But the end result was that that Black citizens of Manhattan were terrorized and killed on the street. Yeah, because you expect me to leave my job and go down south and fight for you. And I don't want you here anyway because you're going to take my job. Right. So... So where so do black people go? Where, where, where do we where do we dwell and exist peacefully? <laughs> <laughs> uh, apparently. Um, 
Um, Heel to this day, Brooklyn. <laughs> um, so, um, so we'll go into more detail about kind of how this this happened, but um, but there would have been numerous enclaves that look like what we're seeing in the Gilded mm -hmm. Age, and right, right. and exactly like all of the other sectors of society that we're talking about at the time, there were rules here. Um, <laughs> so many rules. There were rules and there was a right and wrong way to do things. And so this is what struck me once I'm seeing Peggy in her home with her parents, mm -hmm. as I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, your job that you have right now may be part of the contention between her and her father. Your job, yes, you're a secretary and in, in, in this, but you're living in the servants' quarters in someone's home. That wouldn't be acceptable for Peggy. I mean, in her parents' eyes, we've we've brought you up to be this right. well-bred young lady, right, right. and you're living in a ser servants' quarters. That's that's beneath you. That's not what you should be doing. And as a mother, I would be offended. You would rather live <laughs> beneath your means mm -hmm. instead of coming home where you have servants. Right. Are we that? terrible to you right so but i think you, I, 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 instead of painting peggy out like to be a spoiled brat or just stubborn i just think she's really ambitious she has an eye on the prize and i don't want it handed down to me right i want to go get it absolutely and and she is going to get it i mean you can yeah. see the seeds of this starting and um, and her going out and getting these meetings with publishers and you see her at the Christian Advocate and she turns it down because she's going to have to hide everything about who she is. And then you see her at the New York Globe, mm -hmm. um, which later getting became her hands page. dirty, literally. Yeah, getting her hands dirty. <laughs> and I don't know what's going to become of that. But if that wasn't a meat cute, I don't know what is. Uh, <laughs> And he is cute, honey. I know. I was, I, I, when she was watching, they texted me. I was like, ooh, is Peggy going to get with handsome newspaper man? Because at this point, she's asexual. Right. There's nothing. She has no romantic storyline here. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> they better give her one with him. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and I love the whole thing about politics yes. and how she could not vote. So why should I join forces perfect. with anybody? Pe Peggy had a couple of pretty amazing lines in this. Yeah, why should I commit to a party when I don't get a vote? Fair drop. question. <laughs> um, I think my other favorite, and this is just, again, pointing out that, you know, I mean, technically, and yes, we're talking about different because of the way society was segregated, they're seen differently, but Peggy has more money than Marion does. Marion is the one who's a penniless person. I paid for your train ticket. <laughs> And she gave Marion the business on that side. Yes, sidewalk. she did. But she did not want her parents to see that, though. No. She concealed it until she got outside. And, ooh, baby, Marion got it. She did. She was, she was livid on and so many ways. Like, one, two, three, you have, girl, <laughs> we are not friends. But I don't think she meant that. She didn't mean that. I don't think she did, but I think, I mean, the anger over, and I think to me, what she gets across is you do not see me as a complete person. You don't see me as existing outside of your world. Mm -hmm. and, and something else too. Um, I know down South, if a white person comes to your house and if anything happens to any black person, you're a rat. You, you dropped a dime on me. And mm -hmm. I think part of that conversation with Peggy on the sidewalk was performative because she had onlooking neighbors and she wanted them to know, I didn't approve this. Me and her are not even friends. Right, this isn't on me. Um, right. Yeah. Right. No, right. you know and, what, and that's, she did have a, there were a lot of neighbors around and uh -huh. they clearly already noticed Marion coming to the house. I, I mean, yeah. this was, this was yeah. jarring and you're right she didn't want to do it in front of her parents um, because by so the time this com i'm sorry by the time this conversation has happened word has already traveled around the whole entire borough of brooklyn and probably up to harlem it's the white lady 
she, this white lady in their house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody, be well. <laughs> and so it's interesting because it, I think you might be right and that some of this is performative. And so Peggy's Peggy's walking a tightrope here. She's not doing this in her parents' house because I think she wants her parents to think a certain thing, but she also needs her neighbors and her society to think a certain thing. And here she right. is tiptoeing down this tightrope of Complicated. keeping every because of all of these rules. <laughs> rules, rules. And we haven't touched on the fact how um her mother was trying to match make her with the doctor. Not so either. <laughs> And, and, and Peggy couldn't, Peggy's not interested. No. Why? Well, I guess that's going to get it. That if I have to be man. a wife, right, right. <laughs> if I have to be a, a wife now, I have to be a domestic. I have to, now I have to cook and clean or at least find somebody else to do it. And I can't work at the Globe. Well, and I, I was thinking that too, because, you know, she's starting the foundation of this career and certainly in her neighborhood, if she marries a doctor, no, you don't get to have a job. You will be at home and be a lady life. and you will have help and you will, and, and, and you'll have her mother's life basically. Right. Um, and she does not want that. And she does it. And I think in general, one of the things I, I've heard their historic consultant comment on so many times is one of the fascinating things about the Gilded Age for any of these families is what you're seeing is children that do not want, or for some reason will not have the same life their parents had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's hard. I mean, that's a generational clash. I'm sure for Peggy's mother, it's- Who has busted her butt to make sure she provides and has this- Absolutely. Like I gave you this and you don't and you want, don't want it. You don't want it. Yeah. Why don't you want to be a doctor's wife and- and live in a nice home and have servants and, and Peggy's and wanting this career. To simplify it even more, why can't I please you? Nothing I do is good enough. And you're uh, only here because it's my birthday. You really don't want to be here. And you got me meeting you in random places around town that I wouldn't be caught dead in. unless Oh, I'm she was so town. horrified in that restaurant. Why do you like oh. this place? <laughs> <laughs> and you could tell it was on her face. She has never been in a place like that. Right, right. And, <laughs> and Peggy, Peggy was just fine. Well, just if fine. you want to meet it. me, this is where we're meeting. And then yeah. she handed her a wad of cash and bam. Yeah, she made it, I'm your mother. I can give you money. <laughs> I can give you money. Yes. So and also about the church, I noticed how church religion really they talked about it at the funeral, at the burial. Right. But I don't think they actually have discussed religion or a role that a spiritual being plays in these rich people's lives. They and it was the first yet. thing they said in the Black house. Like, church is everything. Right. Um, because I think from, from what I know, I, I mean, the Astors, I know, were members of Trinity. Because, right. but, and this goes back to, you know, pre-revolutionary era membership in trinity was sometimes more about Political. social standing mm -hmm. and politics mm -hmm. than it was about spirituality being a vestryman of trinity didn't mean you were the most religious it meant you were high profile affiliated yeah right yeah. and, and yeah. so you know i think yeah that we haven't heard it referenced at the van ryans or at the russells i'm sure they go to church because that's what respectable people did but it wasn't right. this immediate reference in this immediate center to life. Yeah, because you can tell a lot about a person based on where they worship. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. I, I'm just thinking about the white lady coming into the black house. Like you can't let white people know how much you have because that could be problematic as well. Jealousy could happen. She could go back and tell how much opulence we have. And now, Somebody's looking into our books and it's just trouble. It's just trouble. I remember even in my personal life, people at my church would have Cadillacs and would have fancy cars and fancy clothes. But day to day around town, they would drive a raggedy beat up pickup truck mm -hmm. and they would wear dirty overalls. It was because you didn't want to let the man know how well you were doing because they'll either think I'm paying you too much or you're stealing. Or it's just trouble. So and church do, is the only time you could really show what you had. And I do wonder 
um, you know, after this, because they kind of leave this and they, they always do this, but they kind of leave all of this hanging at the end of the episode. And so I do wonder how much does Marion tell her aunts about her visit? They know she went. And they, tell I mean, they both of, said, why are you going? <laughs> out of innocence and naivety, she is going to tell and it's going to be a problem. I think you're right because I don't She's think Mrs. Van Ryn, I, clearly she knows Peggy's very educated. She knows she has these skills. I don't know that she knows where Peggy comes from because, it, right. I mean, to her, Brooklyn is this place we don't go. This the land. <laughs> so I don't think she I was, even knows of the existence of this community. I was talking to a friend of mine who lo- loves the show, watches every cue like I do, and he seems to agree with you, but I disagree. I think the aunt has already sent somebody over there to find out because I must have an address. I can't have you living in my house. Oh, and I, that's right. She has done her due diligence. That's she knows right. Who her I parents are. Not about that weird tussle over the address, and I don't. I don't buy that it's just, well, I need to be able to notify them if some, oh, that's true. She knows Peggy's she grandparents. Her out already. She knows where she went to school, where they went to school. She knows where they bank. She knows who makes their dresses. She knows everything about yeah. them. And that's why she's comfortable with her in her dwelling. Yeah. yeah but we is. shall find out. We'll find out, but <laughs> I'm excited. Um. <laughs> and we'll wrap this up here in just a minute. But okay. um, I know we we finally got to see the inside of the Academy of Music. I love this tussle over opera houses. Um, oh, yeah. And, um, and, and seeing seeing this piece. Now, I just have to ask you, um, this uh, this Mr. Rakes, who has proposed to Marion after, I don't know, talking to her four times. See trouble? He's social he, crime. He's social crime. I agree. Crime. Yeah. And he had that girl at that um, opera to make her jealous. And it's he working. Did. It it's is working. working. And mm-hmm. this guy's been in New York for like no time at all. And he's sitting in someone's private box. Like he is like working that social ladder. And he knew no one yeah. two or three weeks ago. Yeah. Uh-huh. And they still have not revealed. Peggy has now gone to him a couple of times for legal advice. We still don't know what that's about. Right. What exactly? What is that? What legal advice? Maybe. No, I was going to say, I'm thinking 2022. Maybe I was thinking maybe she's married and wants to divorce a husband that we haven't met yet. And maybe that's why she's not interested in getting married or meeting anyone. (laughs) Maybe we just gave the writers an idea. (laughs) I was wondering if it was something... in some way, something that she doesn't want her parents to know about, clearly. Right. Right. Um, right. And her father has referenced, you know, I wanted to leave this business to you and you don't want it. You want it. Is it something about that? Is it, I, I don't what know. Did she be? write a novel and she wants to copyright it? I don't know. <laughs> what could it be? Because it, it's important to her. It is. It's very important. I mean, and, and why she's not trying to find a black lawyer. Right. So there's, because there were plenty of black lawyers probably in her social circle at home. Absolutely. Though they didn't know their parents. Um, oh, that's right. I think I wonder she did if say it's, that. She yeah, said I that. I wonder I if it's... Colored lawyers will take it back to her parents. Right. So I think it's it's something to do... With clearly something she absolutely wants to keep her parents out something of. that happened at school something yeah. that happened in pennsylvania yeah we'll see, we see it's girl. such a good show <laughs> <laughs> oh they're doing a wonderful job over there it, it is really good it's so it, good and this is my favorite era like when i got married this was the era my wedding was set in i love this era. Love well it. actually it was like 19 19- 05, like Yankee Doodle. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. similar. Yeah, the horses, the muscles, the parasols, <laughs> all of that. I love it. I love it. I wouldn't have actually wanted to live in that time because of the rules, but I like all of the things that go with it. <laughs> I like the rules. I like the structure. I like that people have a way to behave. 
We don't have that now. We and don't. I think it's costing us. It's we really don't. costing and, us. And it is interesting because, you know, you had these rules and these, these rules of behavior and, and people would call you out on it. If people, and like Audra said, women would police women. They would. Women absolutely would police women. There was a way to do it. There was a way to not do it. And there were very real consequences for not abiding by the rules. A little judgy, but yeah. I think it's I mean, yeah, <laughs> definitely <laughs> judgy. <laughs> but, um, but there, you know, you you lived within these confines, or you didn't live in a community. Oh, that it's was understood that you you are not going to play by the rules. We're not going to play with you, right? Because you make me look bad by being affiliated with you. What a time to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we hope that you will join us next time oh, um, where I'm sure we have more Gilded Age drama to talk about. Um, and for our viewers, please keep an eye out for video detailing a little bit more of, of this community um, in Brooklyn and beyond, because there is a lot more detail that will, will really enhance how you're seeing these scenes play out. Um, yeah. that's why we're doing this is it really does, I think, make a huge difference in watching it. If you know what some of these little subtle things are. Yeah. So, Cause even in Harlem on 138th, you have the buildings designed by Stanford E. White. They're still standing in perfect condition. Um, and so, yeah, so we'll definitely show those in that video. Cause that all ties in to what we're talking about here. Um, yeah. but a huge thank you to lady Altavis for joining us for today and we will see you next time.